So like everybody, I will thank uh, Mike for explaining what big data is. I don't need to talk about it. Uh, we have tons of data of all sorts of all types uh, that, uh, uh, that we get. And inside all this data, it's not just the volume uh, that is interesting, but actually what's interesting is what's hidden inside the data. There's tons of uh, uh, information that if we could use, uh, would be very useful for uh, 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 many, many things. But the point is that the data by itself is not very useful. It's really the insight that we get out of it that could be useful, and the question is how to turn all the data into knowledge. And uh, uh, this is actually the research frontier, how to represent the knowledge uh, uh, that is in the data, how to extract it, how to filter it, etc. And actually today, I don't want to, to talk about all the knowledge or data that is stored on disk uh, in some uh, media, but I want to talk about the knowledge in your heads. Inside your head, there's tons of information a lot of knowledge that you gain by reading things, by learning things, just by observing things uh, uh, in the street. And it would be great if, you, if there was a way to actually pull out all this information and, and make it work for us. And that's what we wanna, uh, wanna do. Uh, so in general, this area that takes talent or information from, uh, uh, from people and exploits it is called uh, uh, crowd sourcing or crowd data sourcing in the context of uh, information. And that's, there's just a bunch of examples here of all sorts of applications that are doing that already. So Wikipedia, I'm sure everybody knows. I'm sure you're already uh, uh, using it. So this is one uh, uh, type of crowdsource information. It's people that actually uh, use their knowledge to create uh, uh, a joint encyclopedia, they write uh, uh, the items inside, uh, they collaborate, they fix it, and we all use it. Uh, uh, another something similar where people contribute information is TripAdvisor. I'm sure you all, when you go uh, uh, abroad or when you uh, want to know whether a, a hotel is good or not, you look at something like TripAdvisor where you see recommendations of people, stars that people gave to restaurants, to hotels, etc. And again, it's information that the public contributed and is very useful. Um, another type completely different of crowdsource data is uh, uh, Galaxy Zoo. Did you ever play uh, Galaxy Zoo? So actually, it's a, uh, it's a game that my kids uh, uh, love. Uh, in, in this game, what, uh, what you do is actually the game shows you uh, pictures taken by the Hubble telescope. They shows you, uh, it shows you vers uh, galaxies, and, they, uh, and the game asks you to tell whether the galaxy is oval or round, or what kind of shape it has, what kind of property, uh, properties it has, etc. And you have to do it very, very fast, and you get points for that. And there is the winner of the day, the winner of the month, uh, etc. So you may be asking yourself, wait, how is that related to crowdsourcing? So actually what happens behind the screen in this, uh, in this game is that the information that the people click, like the fact that you said that the galaxy is oval or that it ra it's round or brown or, or whatever, is collected and stored in a database. So there is this huge database that is created with information about galaxies and then researchers, when they try to find galaxies with different properties, they can search the, this database and extract the information uh, from it. Uh, so one thing maybe to note uh, before we go on is that Looking at the picture and saying whether, uh, determining whether the galaxy shown in it is round or oval or whatever, something that computers know to do. I mean, there are uh, picture processing uh, uh, softwares that can actually do that. But that takes a lot of computing resources. While my kids, when they look at the picture, immediately they know this is round. Okay, so, so my kids do something that computers can do. They do it much faster, it doesn't cost anything. Okay? Another type of a game like that is uh, uh, Foldit, where uh, uh, the players are shown uh, uh, pictures of proteins, uh, three-dimensional pictures of protein, and they're asked to fold it. Okay? So proteins, I don't know if you know that, but they have a shape uh, uh, that can be regular, and, and it's interesting to find this regularity inside the, uh, uh, the three-dimensional shape. And again, folding of proteins is something that uh, uh, computers can do, but it's a computationally very expensive task. But people have this three-dimensional vision where they look at things and can, they can see how to fold it. And actually, I think a year ago, uh, this game was uh, uh, at the front page of uh, New York Times because the players managed to uh, find the new folding for a protein that is related to the HIV uh, uh, disease, and that was uh, uh, great. 
Uh, there are all sorts of other things. I just want to mention uh, uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk. So all the examples that I showed before were people doing voluntarily stuff. So, but you can also do a, a crowdsourcing tasks and get paid for it. So uh, you can actually say, okay, I want this task to be performed by the crowd. I pay for it one cent or five cents or something like that for everybody that does it for me. And then people earn money and you, can, you get your uh, task performed. Then I'll show an example for, for that in a second. So what kind of tasks actually uh, uh, one would use the crowd uh, to perform? So actually there are uh, uh, three kinds of tasks. Okay, one thing is something that can be performed by computers, like fold it, okay? Uh, but it's inefficient, it takes a lot of time. There are other tasks, I didn't show examples, but uh, uh, that a computer can do, but it does it inaccurately and people do it better. And the third thing, like TripAdvisor or Wikipedia, are things that the computer simply cannot do because it doesn't have the information and there we need human to do it, okay? So these are the kind of tasks uh, 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 that we use, and, and, and the question is, okay, so there are all these beautiful applications, what do you need me for? Okay, it's done, it's solved. Uh, so yes, but no. Um, so the main problem is that uh, uh, all these applications are great, but it's only the beginning of the beginning of the beginning of the beginning of what you can do with the crowd. There's tons of stuff that you can actually do, and we are not getting there, actually, because there's no scientific foundation for, for what's going on there. Every, uh, 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 every one of these uh, 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 applications actually had to reinvent the wheel. Okay, they had to, to deal with the same problems that other applications de uh, dealt with, but they did it from scratch. And what we're trying to do in the research that uh, uh, we are running, this is the MODAS project in, uh, um, that we run in Tel Aviv, is actually trying to uh, 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 form scientific foundations that people can build on and build these kind of applications uh, uh, easily. And I'll tell you just a little bit about it. Um, so the kind of things that we're trying to, uh, uh, to handle or the kind of technology that we uh, uh, try to develop are, uh, uh, deals with different problems. So first of all, the most important thing in these kind of applications is to understand what kind of questions you should ask the crowd. What exactly should you ask the crowd in order to get the best information? Uh, and then uh, when you ask the crowd things, they may give you wrong answers. My kids, when they play, they say this uh, 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 galaxy is oval. Maybe it's not oval, maybe it's round, okay? So how do you know that the data that you got from the crowd is correct? And when you realize it's incorrect, how do you clean it? How do you determine correctness, etc.? And also, uh, like always in computer science, there is a question of resources. How do you best exploit people? My kids, they don't play forever. I tell them to go to sleep at 10. Okay, so you want to exploit the time that they play the best. You want to ask them the right questions. To, you want to get the most of their time, etc. And the same from Amazon Mechanical Turk. When you pay people, okay, you want to pay as little as possible, get as much information uh, as possible. So I'm not going to talk about all these uh, 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 things. There are tons of papers uh, 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 that we published uh, and others also uh, uh, on this thing. I'll focus today only on the first topic, but I just want to mention, since I'm a database person, uh, uh, I see everything with database glasses. So for me, everything, the, the world is a database, you're a database, everything is a database. And the technology that we employ in order to solve all these problems, or to try at least to solve all these problems, comes from the database uh, uh, area. And this is tools from data mining, probabilistic data, data cleaning, optimization, uh, etc. I will talk just briefly on some of those uh, in the talk. But again, uh, there are tons of pointers that I can give you if you want to read more. So let's start with a very simple example. Um, suppose I have a, a database, I have a table. Okay, uh, that contains information about uh, 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 people. This is the table up there. It contains just the name of the person and the picture of the person. Okay, that's the information that I have in my database. And now suppose that I want to find is in this database the names of the female uh, uh, in the database. So I was told that this is a politically incorrect uh, 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 query, but since I'm a woman, I'm allowed to, uh, to make this example. So uh, let's try to find uh, the names of women uh, uh, in this database. And if you're a database person, you will write an SQL query that looks something like that. Find the name from the, uh, pers uh, from the people relation where the person is a female. Now, if you look at this database, it's not written anywhere whether a person there is a female or not. Okay, there is the name, there is the picture, and that's it. 
okay? So I need to implement this is female predicate somehow, and I'm gonna do it with the help of the crowd. I will define actually a task for the crowd such that uh, um, given the name of the person, I will ask the crowd, is this person, and I'll show also the picture, uh, uh, female, and the answer will be yes or not. Okay, and uh, this system that implements this stuff, uh, Kirk, it actually generates from that task in, in the Amazon Mechanical Turk where you see something like that. You see a picture, okay, uh, they ask you, is uh, Justin a, a female? And then you have to click yes or no, and then you get some money for it, uh, uh, etc. Okay, so that's a typical, uh, very simple example of how you use the crowd to actually complete the data or, or help with the data that, uh, uh, that you don't have, okay? So, but this example was very, very simple. Why? Because I knew exactly what I want, okay? I knew exactly what question I want to ask from the crowd. I wanted to know whether a person is uh, female or not, and that was very easy. In general, what you have in your mind, in your brain, the, it's tons of stuff that I don't really know what's in there, and therefore I don't really know what to ask in order to get the information. So suppose I want to learn about something that I know nothing about. Uh, for instance, folk medicine, or people habits, what people do, or cooking. I know nothing about cooking, okay? So uh, uh, suppose I want to learn that from you. The question is, what should I ask you in order to learn the interesting things, the stuff that is really interesting for that, uh, uh, for that domain, okay? So, when we started with this problem, we said, okay, why, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Actually, people have studied this problem a lot in databases, okay? In real databases, there is a full, uh, 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 a big area of, uh, 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 of research and an and, and application which is called data mining, okay? You have a big database, you want to find what's interesting in the database, then you have data mining tools that help you to do that. So, for instance, they help you to find uh, something which is called association rules things that could occur together. So for instance, uh, if you look at the database, you could see, for instance, that the, uh, people that have stomach uh, ache uh, drink chamomile tea, okay, if it's written in the database. So the question that, uh, uh, that we had was, okay, can we do the same thing with the crowd? Can we use data mining algorithms and mine what's in your heads, okay? And uh, uh, so let's try, okay? So I can model your history or what happened to you as a database. So for instance, uh, suppose I'm a, 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 a healer and I treat people, okay? So one time I treated a sore throat uh, uh, with garlic and organo leaves, another time I treated sore throat uh, and fever with garlic and ginger, and so it's all the events of all the treatments uh, of uh, things that I treated, or for you, what you were sick in and how you treated yourself, okay? So that's a database. The problem is that, uh, that this database, it doesn't exist, okay? I, I cannot put it on disk. And even if I ask you, tell me everything that happened to you, all the illnesses that, that you had and how you treated them, I'm sure you cannot remember. Do you remember every time that you were sick in the last year and how you treated exactly each time that you were ill? I'm sure you, someone can. Wow, you are really good. Well, there's one, okay? But I think most of us, I cannot. <laughs> Maybe we're never sick, that's also a, a possibility. So, but most of us, we don't, we don't remember all these things, okay? But the thing is that uh, social studies show that people do remember something, okay? We don't forget everything. We do remember something, but what we do remember, we remember things in the form of a summary, like summary information. For instance, I remember that in general, Okay, I don't remember all the times, but in general, often to treat sore throat, I use garlic. Not me, someone, okay? But uh, 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 this is something that I remember. So this is the kind of information that you can get from the crowd and that we will try to get in order to, uh, 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 to mine uh, uh, the crowd's uh, 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 knowledge, okay? So actually what you can do is you can use two types of questions when you deal with the crowd. Something that, you, uh, that we call open questions. This is like free recollection of, of things that, are, are, are of, that you often do. So for instance, I can tell you, okay, tell me how you, eat, uh, uh, how you typically treat a particular illness. Very general, okay? And then you can tell me as answer, okay, I typically treat uh, uh, nausea with a ginger infusion. I don't know why all the examples are of uh, uh, illnesses. We can go for fashion also if you want, but uh, what you wear with what, but since there aren't many women here then, it's probably very boring. 
that's also a sexist remark. Uh, and uh, uh, so this is an open, uh, uh, an example for an open question. Uh, but if you ask these kind of things, you get information, but you get only the prominent things, the things that are kind of, that people remember at first, uh, at first thought. If you want to get deeper into uh, uh, people's uh, uh, mind, then we will ask uh, uh, closed questions, which are very specific, more complex things, but very specific, and then you can tell me things about them. So for instance, I can ask, when a patient has both headache and a fever, how often do you use willow tree bark infusion to, uh, uh, um, um, to cure it? And then you can say never, or you can say uh, uh, once in a while, okay? So in general, we have these two uh, types of questions and we're gonna use them uh, uh, interlivingly uh, uh, to solve the problem. In general, what I'll show you very briefly is how we model this problem, uh, what kind of generic components you need in order to, uh, uh, to solve it, and uh, how you do statistical estimation of the answers uh, of their correctness, uh, uh, et cetera, and then how you make a crowd mining algorithm out of that. Okay, so let's start with the model. It's very simple. It's very uh, uh, close to what people do uh, uh, in standard data mining. So we have users. Okay, these are all the users in the world, uh, uh, in theory. Now, every user has a database hidden. Okay, it's in their mind. We cannot access it uh, uh, directly. And then uh, uh, what we want to mine from people are association rules. When I use that, I, when I'm sick like that, I use that. When I do that, I do that, and, and things like that. And X and Y are, uh, uh, in this thing, are a bunch of things. Okay, so when I have a headache and uh, uh, a stomach ache, these are the two things, then I do this and this and this and this, okay? And, and uh, then we define two notions. Uh, uh, one is user support, the other one is user confidence. User support uh, intuitively says how many times X and Y occur together, okay? That's the support. And the user confidence is among the times where X occurs, how, how many times Y occurred with it together, okay? So this is the user support and the user confidence per user, for one user. Okay, but I don't care just about one user, I actually care uh, uh, about the whole population and therefore I'll, I'll do uh, uh, an average, but I, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Now, what kind of questions I can ask people? I can ask open, qu uh, I can ask closed questions, which are, I show them X and Y, specific X and Y, and I ask them, okay, tell me the confidence and the support for that, or I can ask open question, which is give me an interesting rule and the support and confidence for it. So here's an example. Uh, I can ask, for instance, uh, tell me something interesting and then they can tell me, I typically have a headache once a week. In 90% of the time, coffee works. What does it mean in terms of confidence and support? So the support of when I have a headache, I take uh, 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 coffee uh, is uh, one over seven because this is once a week and then times nine over 10 because it's 90%, okay? And the, uh, and the confidence is simply the 90%. Okay, we're good up to here? All right, so uh, uh, now what I will do is actually I will ask many people in the crowd, we will see in a second how I do that, and I will be interested in the average confidence and support, and I will be interested only in rule, rules that are significant. What does it mean significant? The confidence, the average confidence, and the average support are behind some threshold that I will set. Okay, so these are the significant rules. And what I will try to do is I will try to identify these rules, okay, the significant rules, and I will try to ask the crowd as, many, as few questions as possible and get the information as fast as possible, okay? So uh, I need an algorithm for that, or at least a framework, and it looks like that. So the idea is as follows. This is an iterative process, okay? I'm asking questions to the crowd. Every time that I want to ask a question, first I have to decide which question to ask. This question can be either open or closed. If it's an open question, I just ask, tell me something interesting, and I'm done. I, I wait for your answer, and I, then I pick another question. Okay, but if it's a closed question, it's a specific question, I, I have to decide which one. Which question should I ask now, okay? So, and there comes a more complicated mechanism because first you have to, sit, to, to look at your information and say, okay, what questions are relevant at all to ask? Okay, what are the candidate rules I should ask about? And among them, I have to estimate, okay, are they significant already? What kind of error do I have? What can I say about the information that I have? And then pick the one that will increase my information gain as much as possible, 
Okay, so let's see just a little bit on how you, you look at a rule and, and decide whether it's important or not, okay? Uh, so in general, suppose that you have some rule, okay, coffee imply, uh, headache implies coffee, okay? So suppose I already asked some people in the crowd, okay, so this, I, I can treat it as a sample. I sampled some people from the crowd and I got from them the confidence and support that they have, okay? So I can view that as samples from a distribution, for instance, a normal distribution, okay? And I can, uh, using the sample, this, uh, determine how the distribution looks like, okay? So for instance, the red stuff there kind of determines the distribution of confidence and support among, uh, uh, in people, okay? So there are two, uh, 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 so the x, uh, the x axis here is the support, the y axis is uh, uh, confidence, and every answer from the user is a dot on this, uh, uh, on this grid. And now there is the threshold, okay? I want things that, are, that have higher support than a given threshold and higher confidence than a given threshold. So if we'll go there, then at the upper, for you it's the right corner, okay? At the upper right corner is actually the area that I'm interested in, okay? This is the area where people think that this rule is important, okay? So in order to know how much, uh, uh, how much of the mass is there, what I do mathematically is I integrate, okay? So I look how much of the distribution is there, okay? And the rest, the rest of the, uh, the mass is actually the error, how much is not there, okay? So if I'm more, con if there's more than half of the distribution up there, then it means that the rule is likely to be, more likely to be uh, 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 significant than not, okay? And I can do similar analysis to know how more questions about this rule will affect the distribution. Uh, will, will my confidence get higher or lower, et cetera? Uh, I'm not going to get into, uh, 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 into all these details. So I showed you how you look at one rule and estimate what you can tell about it, but there are still the questions, okay, which rules should I look at? And then we go, uh, uh, like in standard data mining, we start from simple rules like simple facts and then we increase and increase and look at more complicated things. And then I also have to tell you when you ask open questions and when you ask closed questions. And then again, uh, you can use something very simple like flipping a coin or something like that, okay? Uh, rather than getting into this, the details of this thing, I want to look a bit uh, 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 at, at a more general picture. And actually, the thing is, you're dealing with human, okay? It's not just data mining uh, a standard from a database. There are human there. And when you talk to human, I mean, words mean something, okay? So if you tell me, for instance, then when you drink headache, uh, when you have a headache, you drink an espresso, okay? Espresso is a coffee, okay? So I know that, for instance, if it's frequent that when people have headache, they drink espresso, it's also frequent that they drink coffee, okay? Because Espresso is just one type of coffee, so maybe they drink also more other things, okay? So there are relationship and semantic uh, relationship between things, and I can exploit them when I do this mining. For instance, I will never ask someone, uh, do you drink espresso and coffee at the same time, okay? Because it's, it's redundant, okay? So I can use semantic information to make the, the, uh, the questions that I ask smarter, to infer information, uh, 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 and so on. And then what I will try to do actually is to use the semantic information and to use everything that I know in order to make my algorithm as efficient as possible. But now again, this is not just, in, in computer science we measure efficiency of algorithms by complexity, okay? We ask what is the complexity of this algorithm? But here, we don't just have the computer, we cannot just count how many uh, uh, instructions or how many operations we did, because we deal with people. So actually we need to look at two kinds of complexity measure, okay? One is the traditional one, okay, which is how much do I compute? But the other thing is the complexity, which we call crowd complexity, which is how many questions do we need to ask the crowd in order to solve a problem? And actually there is a close relationship between, between these two things, because if I want to be very efficient with respect to the crowd, not to ask many questions, then I have to work hard to decide which questions to ask. Okay, so this is going to cost me a lot in terms of computation. On the other hand, you know, just if I just uh, ask whatever I want to ask, etc. so computationally it's very easy, but it's gonna cost me a lot in crowd complexity. So there is this close uh, uh, relationship between, between these two uh, complexity uh, 
measures. We did a lot of research to try to understand how it works. I can show you a scary table with a lot of uh, complexity measures. We're not going to get uh, into that. If anyone is interested, I can point uh, 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 to the relevant uh, paper. Instead, what I want to do is actually look at even the bigger picture. Okay, so what? Let's dream a little bit. Okay, so what would we really want the crowd to do for us? Okay, so. Suppose uh, 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 I'm traveling uh, next week to New York, okay? And I'm going with my kids. So what I want to know before going, for instance, is I want to find activities to do with my kids. In a, uh, I want to, to find some child-friendly att attraction to do with them in New York, and maybe I want to go with them to eat afterwards, so I want also a good restaurant nearby. So this is what I'm looking for, okay? Uh, what I would love to get, I would love a system that I can ask this thing like that, just like that, and then get as answer things like uh, 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 you can go uh, bike riding in Central Park, then you can eat in a mouse restaurant, and ah, if you go to, uh, 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 to Central Park, don't forget uh, uh, that you can also rent bikes in the boathouse. Now, if you look at my questions, I didn't ask about that, but this is the kind of things that people say when you ask them a question. You, they don't just answer exactly what you ask. They give you kind of related information, what they think would be relevant, etc. Okay, or they can tell me, okay, go visit the Bronx Zoo and uh, go eat and find restaurant, but when you go there, you should order antipasti at the restaurant and actually the, uh, the dessert, don't eat there, go, go eat it uh, uh, next uh, 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 at the ice cream place uh, across the street. So re related things that people would, would give. So. If you actually look deeper at these things, I asked about activities, uh, uh, attractions and restaurants. I got this information, relevant information, and I got also other stuff, okay? So this is what I want. That's, that's the magical system that I want that will use existing repositories and the crowd to answer these kind of questions, okay? So what kind of resources a system like that has? So it has information about the world. This is an ontology uh, uh, that says that, okay, an activity could be a visit or a sport. Sport could be swimming or biking or ball games, etc. There are restaurants, there are uh, nearby restaurants, etc. So this is one type of information. You can find it in databases or on the web, okay? And there is another type of information, which are the things that people do. Okay, so a person, for instance, went uh, biking uh, at Central Park and at the same time also played bi uh, uh, baseball and rented bike at, bo at the boathouse. Okay, so that's uh, the, the item two there. So these are the things that people do. But again, as I said before, these are, I don't have them. These are the things that are hidden in people's heads and I would like to mine. Okay, so the way the system works is actually, ideally it will take this, natural language question from the crowd, and then it will translate it, you don't need to read all this code, it will translate it into a query, okay, to the crowd and the database. So what's written there, essentially, the first part is, is a Sparkle uh, uh, query that goes and asks things about the ontology, and the second part is the part that says, okay, what should I mind from the crowd? Okay, I'm looking for activities that are frequent uh, 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 with this support, with this threshold, uh, etc. And then the system takes this kind of query and actually compiles it, as I showed you before, to questions to the crowd. Okay, so for instance, uh, it will ask uh, people, uh, how often do you do something in Central Park? Or how often do you eat at most vegetarian? Or how often do you swim in Central Park, et cetera, et cetera? Okay, so there is a formal description of that in the logic below, but we don't care. And then the people will say, oh, I do it often, or I do it once a week, or I do it something like that, and we will interpret that as support. So these are examples for closed questions, and you could also ask them, the system can also ask them open questions, like uh, what do you do in Central Park? Or what else do you do when you go biking in Central Park? Or complete the sentence, when I go biking in Central Park, something, okay? And again, the system will collect this information and, and interpret it and, and compile it in actually uh, uh, putting everything together to give answers to the, uh, to the users. So for instance, that's the semantic description of the answer that I will get. So uh, uh, you should go uh, and do uh, ball games in Central Park and then eat at most vegetarian. Okay, or uh, visit the Bronx Zoo and then eat at Pine Restaurant. Okay, so these are the kind of things that I will try to get to, from the crowd and, and, and put them together. Uh, so a 
up till now, we saw more or less like this vision. Okay, I want to ask the system things, it will give me information, uh, etc. And But the question is, uh, okay, you tell me things, I get information from you. Is it correct? Can I trust it? So for opinions or experience of people like, did you like this restaurant? Uh, did you go there? This is an opinion thing, it's not an objective information and therefore somehow maybe unless you're, uh, these, the, the users are malicious or something like that, you can trust them. But for many things, if you ask what's the capital of France, there's just one correct answer. Okay, so you would like to be able to kind of filter out uh, uh, the, the things and try to analyze the information. And I have just uh, uh, one nice example that you may want to see. Okay, uh, so we saw an example where trusting the crowd is a bit problematic. Uh, I think in general, uh, uh, this is a very, uh, uh, this is really a very difficult problem because it's not just uh, uh, whether you can trust or not, but for different topics, you need different experts and, and different communities will know things about other things. And also there are difficult questions and easy questions. Okay, and, and again, for difficult questions, many people will be wrong, few will be correct, and still you have to understand that, that that's the correct answer. And, and again, it's even more difficult because data get, keeps updated all the time. When people play a game, for instance, and my kids give information to the system, etc. So something that you thought was correct, suddenly you think is incorrect and correct again, uh, and so on. And, and as I said before, you want to do all these things efficiently, use your resources the, uh, in the best way. So it's a very complicated problem. Uh, Research-wise, there is a lot of uh, advances on that that use statistical model, declarative uh, 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 specification, a lot of provenance, but it's really a very, very complicated problem and there's tons of research still left uh, uh, to be done here. Uh, okay, I want to conclude. Uh, so I hope uh, that I convinced you that the crowd is actually an incredible resource. There's tons of information there and, and 
we need to get it somehow and we need to develop methods to do it. Uh, actually, this is a quote that I really like. Uh, so Picasso uh, uh, once said that computers are useless because you can o they can only give you uh, uh, answers. They're not creative. What we're trying to do in this, uh, 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 in this research is actually make the computers ask questions, the right questions, and therefore make them less useless than what he thought uh, 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 they are, and, and, and there are many challenges. We're not even nearly there. Uh, this is a very interactive uh, uh, computation. There's tons of information, uh, very uh, varying uh, quality of users and, and answers, and one has to deal uh, 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 with all that. And uh, just to conclude, I'd like to uh, uh, thank the, the people in my group and some external people that have been working with us uh, uh, on this project. Certainly, the, the, the blue ones uh, uh, contributed a lot to the mining part of, uh, um, uh, uh, of the research. And if you have questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you.